One is, I mean, the famous quote, not to know what happened before uh, one is born is to remain forever a child. And, and, you know, how do we look at history and mine it for uh, valuable information that's of contemporary relevance? Prior to becoming an academic, I used to work at the U.S. Department of State, and one of the issues in my portfolio involved the Iraq Weapons of Mass Destruction Program. The nature of the intelligence collection business, it's, you're always, you know, it's, you rarely deal with certainty. Uh, a lot of times um, it's about, you know, probabilistic assessment. And, you know, you hear people like uh, former National Security Advisor and Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice, you know, we, we just don't want, um, you know, the the smoking gun to be a mushroom cloud. This is a very famous quote that she said, and, and um, but that's going off of, uh, you know, intelligence assessments and sometimes cherry-picked um, and misleading intelligence assessments that were co-opted for political purposes. Telling the story from, which is a very cinematic tale from the Gulf War and kind of tracing the roots of that decision to invade Iraq through the UN inspection regime, through a high profile defector from the Saddam Hussein uh, inner sanctum, to, uh, from, to the Clinton administration and the bombing of, uh, of Iraq, to the Bush administration. Uh, there are uh, really a lot of uh, twists and turns in there. Um, and I will tell you for, for the record that I was one who definitely believed, based on the information I had, that uh, Iraq had weapons of mass destruction. Uh, however, there was a huge part of the government that was skeptical about the wisdom of whether or not to invade. During that time period, I had I was the uh, liaison for my bureau, which was the Bureau of Nonproliferation to the Intelligence Community. And then right after that, I went and worked for for that guy Biden, and and so I was there for all the Hill briefings on the Iraq stuff. So I've I've had briefings, intelligence briefings. I was privy to the highest level intelligence on the weapons of mass destruction, sensitive compartment information and stuff. Once the decision to invade Iraq is made. Uh, we have a tendency to support the troops, as, as one should, and uh, talk a lot of the discourse, the political discourse, concerns whether the invasion was executed well, uh, whether the surge worked, um, what are the origins of ISIS and whose fault is it? Did we leave Iraq too early? And a lot of the conversation has moved away from really the crucial decision, which is to invade Iraq or not to invade Iraq. The United Nations, at least in the United States, gets a pretty bad name, as does kind of multilateral arms control. Um, however, if you look behind the scenes, um, the, actually there's a huge amount of successes uh, that occurred with the UN inspection regime in Iraq that are um, that have largely been swept under the rug in terms of the kind of common media coverage or common conventional wisdom with respect to Iraq. And if 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 you doubt me on this, ask yourself. Did they find weapons of mass destruction? And the one of the reasons why they did not is because the inspection regime destroyed so much WMD uh, material um, as well. There's a story to be told about intelligence. I alluded to that earlier. Um, there's a story to be told about the, the role of the media and the responsibility of the media. All of these, intelligence, media, arms control, uh, the, the threat of weapons of mass destruction and how to deal with that uncertainty, all of these issues are uh, at the fore of uh, our leadership today.